Holy moly, what a beautiful day. So I'm amazed at your wonderful history. You've got five years in Spain. Yeah. You kind of, that's, I'm wondering if that's when the, the love started to happen that you thought, these caves in Granada, I want to bring these home with me. What, was there a sort of a, a, a moment where you, where you made that decision or did it gradually creep up on you? Uh, I would say it more gradual, to be right. honest. Um, was, I think it probably had spent so much time there and I loved how they, the women there style things and the kind of pleasure they take from accessorizing and the use of colour and texture and metal and the recession was here at the time and this right. was, so everything was a bit grey and a bit grim here so it was like so you abandoned us and went to somewhere sunny and beautiful <laughs> <laughs> But that, that's followed by Malaga, and this is where you start to really get into the possibilities of what you might be doing one day. Again, I just I, I just find it a wonderful thing that you you had this road to Damascus moment in beautiful sunny places for quite a few years, and for a lot of people it's it's you know it's a hard thing to step out and, and, and start a business. But I get the impression with you, it just constantly kind of just grew and grew into something maybe that you didn't uh, plan I don't know I don't know how yeah it was. totally yeah it was very much an organic kind of thing I think ignorance is bliss in a lot of ways with that sort of stuff because you don't uh, it's definitely pure ignorance on my part I, I never uh, ever have a very long-term goal it's always just in the present moment and what feels like the nicest thing to do or the most fun thing to do and then it just grew into such a big passion that it like I had to make it succeed and um, but then I, I've just been so fortunate always very very fortunate with the people around me and with and and not just saying it like Irish publications and yeah everybody just supported the brand from the beginning never ever had to look for it but that 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 idea of establishing yourself where you go to Kilkenny you decide you're going to do a degree you're going to really know what you're doing in, in, in this field was it very quick that you you got that sort of recognition was it I, I don't know how many years before you really sort of stood out and okay 2017 I'm going to open up my own place was, was, I don't know if the, if the years before that were, were long and hard or... No, it, ah. to be honest, because I'd come from a beauty, cosmetic background, so I was always working in the media, always doing shoots, always kind of mixing with photographers and stylists and that side of, side of life. So I suppose when I did the jewellery thing, I also had a beauty salon and the two were in the one premises and the jewellery just took over the, the beauty side of it very quickly. So I hadn't really opened a space that was you know engineered yeah. towards selling jewelry it was right. more engineered towards it to keep the beauty thing going because that's what i knew best and then jewelry grew so quickly that i changed the whole business and uh, uh, but it was very fast the kind of decision to come home do the course open shop it all sort of happened very quickly but that thing of uh, you know going from you know kind of doing covers to making your writing your own songs it's, it's a big leap to say okay i'm going to start designing it my own things obviously a joyful but, yeah. but was there any great you know fear of, of uh will this work will i will i be able to you know deliver on on this front because it's it's a big thing to come up with your own design um i don't know i never really had any fear you're very confident you drunk all the time you're very it's very <laughs> yeah. casual to you i don't know what's going on here um, <laughs> i know it is sounds really casual like in a bit like not the respect due to it but uh, yeah no honestly it was just very yeah. natural very natural that's the best and that 2017 when you opened was it soon after or was it already kind of in the ether that that people like tatler and others were sort of recognizing what you were doing and, and image and all that was it already part of your world and already i don't know it your... was probably i knew that world because right. i would have been working on shoots and things like that all the time but always doing the makeup doing the visual doing a bit of styling things like that and um, and then i think because stylists I, it was just so fortunate that they liked the stuff that we had at One Day Lane that they'd come in and they'd pull for shoots and things so then your jewellery has been used all the time on shoots so then you're getting I suppose your pieces get published and people see it and um, and that attracts them and then it just sort of moved in that direction but like, that's how I sometimes I think I'm just so lucky because all of that was so organic we never had a PR agent we never had a marketing media team wow. you know people used to ask me like who does your PR nobody it's just sort of it worked out and bizarrely even though i grew up adoring david bowie i never wore jewelry and yet i did hear about you from people like amanda sweeney and others it seemed mm. that, that that you know the good old-fashioned word of mouth is such a huge part of yeah. when something's good people talk about it and before you know it lots of people are talking about it yeah i think that's yeah. always the best 
Yeah. Pro it's, it, it, it's always been the protocol, always been the direction. And that's why we never advertised because it was, you potentially, you might find things are a little bit slower or you might just have to have a bit more faith. Mm. But that word of mouth and the, the repeat customers are kind of what the business was built on right. because they always came back and they always brought a friend. And um, yeah. yeah, it gave just credence to what, what, what we were doing. We should now kind of hit the highlight of your entire life so far, moving into a Greystone oh, yeah. shop. <laughs> was, was, was that um, kind of long on the cards? I, it was, I, had you sort of heard about the space and, and jumped? or how, how did this come about? Um, I, so I moved here. So I had the Dublin store after five years, and then I moved down here uh, because of the fact that COVID happened and we were all a bit freer to move around and mm. wasn't so anchored to space. And I was only here a week, and I said, that's it, I have to stay here. And, just, and it was such a, again, another very quick decision. Something I thought of at one o'clock in the morning, went online looking, and, and then within seven days I lived here and never left. Wow. And kept the Dublin store, but um, I had always had my eye on that on the unit here because I thought it was so beautiful, and it's a lot of history to it, and it's so nicely positioned, it's so cosy, it's a lovely space. So it was one of those moments where I saw it, and I was like, I want that. Just to say, now it took you seven days to find a place to rent. You, you maybe should work in that area of, of finding people spaces because seven days that's brilliant. No, that was just sheer luck. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I'm just very, very lucky. Yeah. We should give a shout out to the fact that you know you're up for designer of the year with the, oh, it's the yeah. VIP. Is that something that that you know catches you still by surprise when people? Totally. Right. I'm that dim. I, they invited me to the nominations thing, and I couldn't figure. I was like, I don't know why they're asking me to go to that. <laughs> I hadn't even. I didn't even know. Right. I didn't even know. So absolutely brilliant, though. But a good feeling that that people who are not, you know, connected to you in any way, they just sort of recognise this this stuff is oh, great. Oh, it's gorgeous. Yeah. Because you do, you get so busy, and you're you're so focused on what you're doing all the time that you forget about that side of it. You just you just want to keep the whole train moving. But um, when I saw that, I was delighted. Yeah, really. I couldn't. I just would I don't put myself there so for somebody else to put me there is such a nice thing I suppose the final thing is how is Greystones treating you because I, I get the impression that, that, that people are very very happy to see you here oh that's lovely yeah, yeah well just, just so. from the reaction when we put stuff up online on social media just there's a strong reaction and it's uh, you can kind of tell it's genuine that they're oh. they're really happy to see you yeah yeah and how, does it feel does it feel like you've been uh, I mean, you're not, you know the town pretty well already but I don't know if you sort of feel you're, you're already part of it or uh, I, I did because I think when I came here I got such a warm welcome right. from like local businesses and from people that work in the area like it was very very helpful very like yeah. from coming from Dublin I suppose where you might not know the tenants around you you might not know any of the landlords so that was the initial one but then when we opened the store everybody all the local businesses came in with gifts and then offering me like services and treatments in their businesses and i could do the same for their staff and that's yeah. that sense of community is just wonderful because you oh you never you feel alone then you kind of feel a part of something and then we get to see kind of the same faces because it's a smaller community so you just get to know people a lot quicker but uh, i yeah. i feel i love the space here i'm sure like like when yeah. the weather is like this um, where else would you be and just so you're aware it's 25 years as a blow-in before you're you're officially i don't know yeah sure i'll probably be ancient by then <laughs>